Charlie Brooker and you're watching Newswipe, a programme all about what's been going on, such as this. Government raises national bewilderment level from substantial to severe. Furious coverage as chocolate protesters tell Kraft, you can stick your Toblerone and you know what, we'll even warm it up so it slips in more easily. And astonishing scenes as Prince William tours New Zealand as his alter ego, Owl Man. The Queen started tweeting a few months ago. But we start, well, there is only one place to start, unfortunately. From the moment the first reports of the Haiti disaster began to trickle in, it was clear this was an immense catastrophe. A torrent of harrowing and apocalyptic imagery turned every news bulletin into a nightmare of heartbreaking proportions. We'll be looking at the coverage in more detail next week. Anyway, at a time when the bulk of the news is taken up with an immense humanitarian disaster, what is a dumb, topical show like ours, which thrives on taking the piss out of news coverage, supposed to do? Well, what does the news do when it's short of suitable things to cover? There are plenty of stories the news can practically just pluck off the shelves, ready formed. Here are just a few of them. Controversy. Controversy is a gift for the news because by reporting on the controversy, you help feed the controversy, which means you can then do a report on how this controversy is growing by the hour. A good recent example is the case of radical cleric Anjum Chowdhury. Recently, Chowdhury and Islam for UK said they wanted to stage a protest in which 500 demonstrators carrying empty coffins to represent Muslims killed in Afghanistan would march through the symbolic town of Wooten Bassett. Now, this was merely an announcement, but because Chowdhury, seen here relaxing on the plush GMTV sofa like he's Joe Swash, has recently become a minor renter jihadi gob media figure, his proposed march became big news. Soon after it was announced, it was all over the papers, while TV reporters hit Wooten Bassett to urgently canvas opinion. And the other issue here that many have voiced to me is that this was all a publicity stunt. All Mr Chowdhury really wants is publicity. Come on, it can't just be a publicity stunt. The news wouldn't fall for that. Meanwhile, back at the studio, it was the subject of an illuminating yes-no debate. All this is is really a publicity stunt. Now, come on, it can't just be a publicity stunt. That would just provoke friction and outrage between Muslim people and others in Britain. One of the aims of his group is to, is to provoke friction and outrage between uh, Muslim people and others in Britain. Yeah, well, thank God the news isn't helping with that. By six o'clock, the unpublicity non-stunt was second in the running order on ITV's Evening News. They started by giving valuable airtime to Chowdhury himself. Weirdly, he almost made it sound like a publicity stunt. Wooten Bassett has been chosen because it will raise awareness and you know it will gain uh, it will gain notoriety in the in the media. They also spoke to the relatives of dead soldiers, interviewed the mayor, and told us half the internet was opposed to the idea. Plenty of promotional material for Anjum's forthcoming march, a march which definitely wasn't just a publicity stunt. If publicity was the aim of a march in the first place, then the organisers have already achieved that. It's a bloody good job it isn't then. By 10 o'clock, Chowdhury's concrete and detailed plans for his absolutely positively going to happen protest march had made it to number one in the news parade. Anger and revulsion at plans by Muslim extremists to take their protest to the streets of Wooden Bassett. As the bearded unfunny man's face loomed large on the deck of the USS Newsy Prize, we were told the march looked set to cause upset, conflict and division. Of course, causing conflict, upset and division was presumably the last thing on ITN's mind when it gave Chowdhury more airtime by putting him in a room with a man who'd lost his son in Afghanistan and filming the inevitable subsequent row. So, Julia, a lot of upset already. Can this march really take place? Can it take place? Come on, it's not just some publicity stunt, you know. I think there's extremely little chance that it will. Huh? The reality is they haven't asked for permission. No. Huh? They haven't even got a date set. Huh? It's merely an aspiration at the moment. Well, no permission, no date, only an aspiration. You're talking as though this whole march thing was just the absurd pipe dream of some bunch of jobless, hype-hungry bell ends all along. When I talked to Mr Chowdhury earlier today, he said he was both privately amazed and really quite delighted that two little words, as he described them, Wooten Bassett, had afforded him this level of publicity. Well, like in a publicity stunt. This march was clearly never going to happen. It was just a provocative wish, as deliberately incendiary as a member of the BNP saying they were going to build a mosque out of bacon in the centre of Bradford. 
but by merely suggesting something outrageous Anjum and co were granted thousands, possibly millions of pounds worth of free publicity. In news terms, he'd given good story. Trouble is, that meant an extremist, about as representative of Muslims as Nick Griffin is of the English, temporarily became the primary face of Islam, causing a level of public and tabloid anger far greater than the size of his following, as moderate Muslims were keen to point out in a reflective and well-balanced report on ITN. They, they represent a very, very small pr proportion of the Muslim community in this country. They do thrive on this sort of publicity, which is why it's even more important for um, more media outlets to, t to pay attention to alternative Muslim voices and not give these people the disproportionate publicity they crave. Yeah, whatever. Anjum's about to say something outrageous. Eventually, the government got involved banning Islam for UK outright, which might not make much difference, as Andrew Neil Tetchley suggested during a confrontational encounter on the Daily Politics. You will reassemble, won't you? Well, look, uh, let me put it like this. If I gather together with my friends in a local park and I decide to eat together, we decide to write a leaflet and even distribute it in the market, is that now illegal? No, it's a picnic. Speaking of extreme Islamists, here's our resident poet, Tim Key, with a bit of verse about the Taliban. There should be a laugh. This poem is about the uh, Taliban, which is, I suppose, the closest we have is the... Well, we don't really have one. We have to, it's one of these things we have to travel to really see it properly in its, in its own environment. The Taliban should be bloody banned. If I ran Iran or Afghanistan, I wasn't sure which one, I'd ban them, I'd can them, I'd fan them, which is, um, in brackets, light them and then fan them to get the flames going up them. And then I'd lock up the leaders and re-educate the followers. Try and get some progress over there. Try and restore a little bit of law and order in that neck of the woods. Trends. Trends. Now there's a vague category. It's just stuff, basically. Any old shit that's happening. Now the handbag is perhaps the women's most important possession, crammed with all the stuff we need. But while bags might have got bigger, they've also become lighter. Yes, during a short 20-minute news bulletin in the midst of the Haiti disaster, Five News still considered it a slow enough news day to ring an entire wacky news item from the trend for women's handbags getting lighter. It's a medically proven fact that without handbags, women would cease to function. Mm, just like lungs, really. But something is changing. Their handbags are getting lighter. Why? What's changed? I have to know. We used to carry the full makeup kit here. We used to carry the larger purse. And we also used to carry our whole lifestyle, so our MP3 player, our phone and our diary. Whereas now we carry more of a smaller purse, full of our cards, a smartphone. And we also carry a makeup compact, which is eyeshadow, blush, lip and foundation. So less is definitely more. Absolutely. Mm, you know there's people dying in the world, don't you? But fearless investigator Peter Lane isn't done yet. He takes a set of scales into the mall and weighs women's handbags. Only to discover that the whole lighter bag theory he's based his report on is bullshit. Does it feel heavy? It does actually, yeah. Has it got any lighter in recent years? No. Social issues. Try as we might, we just can't make society go away. Which means social issues will always be with us and always all over the news. ITN recently managed to wring a whole week's worth of material out of the hoary old problem of nightmare neighbours with a series of special reports exposing the depressing truth about ASBOs. This focused on one troublesome family in particular, detailing their identities and their activities in the style of a CIA intelligence briefing explaining an episode of Shameless. Members of your family saying, fatty this, fat slag, things like that. Total not to rubbish. How would that make you feel if every time you left your house you were called something like that? What's in a name? What's in a name? What's in if a name? every time you left the house I, you were I insulted like that, school. how do you I think you would feel? I love it when news at 10 boils down to two blokes squabbling incoherently on a pavement. I grew up in school getting names called at me. That doesn't make it right, I know it doesn't make Jill. it right, but 